Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. Today in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about how to export your Revit drawings into CAD drawings. So let's begin. So this is a sample residential design project. I have a ground floor plan which looks like this. Now I've completed this design in Revit, but I want to share this design with my other consultants who do not use Revit. I want to convert this into CAD and give them as a reference. How do I do that? So first thing I want to do is go under File, Export, CAD Formats. And because I want to convert this into DWG, I'm going to choose one of these CAD formats as DWG. Now here, you have multiple options of what do you want to export. To begin with, I'm going to use the current view or sheet only, which means the active view that I have is going to be automatically selected. Then I'm going to go under my settings. These export settings are very important. They're going to define how your CAD drawing is going to look like when you have exported. There are multiple different settings that you must ensure that they are correct. Let's start with the first tab, which is layers. Now, as you know, all the elements in Revit is organized by category, whereas in CAD, it's layers. So we need to convert those categories into layers. For example, Let's go ahead and check on walls. So walls is a category in Revit, but when you convert a Revit drawing into CAD, it's going to automatically take all the walls and put them under layers A-wall. Now these namings and color IDs and all of this and different settings are based on currently the American Institute of Architects standard, the CAD standard used by AIA. You can change this to ISO, Singapore standards, British standards, or you can load a custom settings file from the browser that you have. So for now, I'm going to just keep it um, default to AIA standards. Now let's go to the second tab, which is lines. Now we need to convert the lines of Revit into CAD. Now all the line styles that you've created in Revit is going to automatically convert into a line type of DWG. Most of the time this mapping is going to happen automatically but sometimes if you think a line type is not exported correctly you can come back to this and change this particular line style into something else manually. The same thing is with hatch patterns. All the hatch patterns, all the fill patterns in Revit is automatically going to be mapped into CAD as CAD hatch patterns. So this is also generally I don't do anything here because most of the time it works correctly. Sometimes if you feel that a particular fill pattern has not exported correctly, you can come back here and make a manual choice between the mapping here. Let's go to the next tab, which is text and fonts. The text that you've created in Revit is also going to automatically map into CAD as the text fonts in DWG. So this is also something that I don't really uh, hamper with. Next is colors. Now this is something you must understand. There are three options available to you. One is index colors. So these color IDs that are given to you are these RGB color IDs. So basically a CAD drawing may look very colorful, whereas in Revit generally you work in black and white. So if you want your Revit drawing to be colorful based on the color IDs given to you here by the CAD standards, then you choose index colors. So these are a bunch of 255 colors with all the color IDs. So each layer is going to follow the color IDs given in layers settings. Another option is that you have specified in object styles, the true color. So if you have created a black color, it's going to be black. If in the object styles, a particular object is red, it's going to be red. It's not going to follow the color IDs in layers, but it's going to follow the colors that you've defined in object styles. If you have override your object style settings in particular view and change the color codes of that in your view, this is the third option which is saying specified in view. So whatever over overrides you have created in your view is going to be also replicated in CAD. Now let's try to take, um, now let's try to experiment with this by doing this export couple of different times with different settings. The first settings I'm going to use is index color. So we are going to get a very colorful uh, CAD drawing when we are exporting. Next, let's go to the solid section. If you're exporting a 3D, you want to know whether you want to export a mesh kind of a 3D or a solid kind of a 3D. So currently it doesn't matter because we are exporting a 2D drawing. Units and coordinates. Currently, my units in the setting of my ground floor plan is meters. But how do I want to export this into my 
get do i also do i want to follow my project settings or do i want to change it into any other units i'm going to keep the same as meters coordinate base if you're using shared coordinates you can use shared or if you're using internal origin like what i'm doing right now is internal origin so i'm going to keep it like that these are general settings i've used some room boundaries here and there's an option of saying export room spaces and areas as polyline. So you can also calculate areas of your rooms or your area boundaries in CAD too. If you don't want to do that, you can uh, switch this off. So there was not going to be any polylines for your rooms. I'm to switch this on. There are also many other default settings, which are generally, I leave it as it is because I want to hide all the scope boxes, reference planes and reference view tags and so on. Now there's another option here, it's saying export views on sheets and links as external levels. We're going to talk about this when we are going to export a sheet a little later on this video. Export to file format, you can choose which version of um, CAD that you want to export your drawing to. And I'm going to say OK to all these settings and I'm going to go next. And I'm going to save it in my desktop on the export folder. Now you will have an option of naming your file automatically with a short annotation saying floor plan dash zero zero ground level or you can make it a long one which includes the name of your file which is sample project learning revit online and dash the category of the view floor plan and dash the name of your view zero zero ground level or you can always go ahead and manually specify the name that you would like to give so I'm just going to keep it um, automatic short name. Say, okay, let's go ahead and see what happened here. I'm going to export folder and I'm going to open this DWG file. So here we are. We have a beautiful colorful drawing available in CAD. Now, if you go ahead and zoom in a little bit here, when I click on one of the lines here, you will see that it is converted into a CAD line. If I select on a text, you'll see it's a text of CAD. If I select a particular wall, for example, you will see that it follows a dash wall layer. And if you look at the layer properties, see the color codes it has assigned based on the layer settings that we had. These names of your layers are also following the AIA standards that we have chosen. If you look at a particular hatch pattern, for example, the hatch of Revit has converted into the hatch of CAD. All the families that you've used, for example, these doors and these windows are going to be converted as block references. So now let's go ahead and hide a couple of layers here. I'm going to switch off. And I'm going to switch on only the layer for my area boundary. And you'll see that each of these rooms that I've created have converted itself into polylines, like what we had ask the general settings to do. Let's go ahead and switch on all the layers again. And here we are. Let's go ahead and close this one and go back to our Revit. I'm going to go ahead and export the same drawing but with slightly different settings. So I'm going to go back here and change my colors from index color to specified in view. And let's say OK. And I'm going to convert that. And I'm going to manual specify name as ground floor um, with black and white. I'm going to say OK to this. And let's go ahead and find what we have got. So here you see now this particular drawing is no longer colorful, but it's black and white, just the way we have it in Revit. And if you look at the layer properties, still have the naming of your layers based on EIA standards, but the color IDs have been changed to what you have in your uh, view settings. So that's the difference between a regular export with index colors and an um, export with either object style settings or with the view settings. Now I want to go back into my Revit here and let's go ahead under Sheets. Now I have an A3 size sheet title block available here and I've placed my ground floor plan on this sheet. Now what happens when you export a sheet into a CAD? So let's go to File, Export, CAD Formats, DWG. And this time you can see the preview that we have selected a sheet instead of a view. Now when you are doing this, there's one additional settings that you have to be careful about. So let's go back to the settings under General. 
you have a default export options available here. It says export views on sheets and links as external references. So the viewport that you have placed on your sheet, whether that uh, particular drawing is going to be part of the same drawing or is going to be an external drawing placed on the sheet as an XREF. Now I'm going to try to export this twice. First time with the option on and the second time without the option, just to show you what's the difference between the two. So this time I've kept it open and I'm going to say OK, next. So this is going to have two drawings, one which is for the sheet and the other for the XREF drawing. And I'm going to say give me automatic long names and I'm going to say OK. Now let's go to back to our folder. So what do we have here? I have two drawings, one which is a sheet A101 ground floor and then sheet A101 ground floor dash floor plan ground level. Let me open the first one. It lands on your layout here and you will see that you have an A3 size sheet available to you and the viewport drawing that is placed on the sheet is not part of the model. Instead, it's an external reference linked to a separate drawing. So I'm going to go back out of this and close this one and open up the next drawing, which is the drawing which is part of the model and is used as an external reference on the other drawing as a sheet. Benefit of this method is that let's say, if, for example, I'm going to make some changes to this particular drawing. Let's say I'm going to add one line here. I'm going to save this. And when I go back to my sheet, you'll see that that external reference is already updated. So you're not expecting any changes from your um, consultant or any other designer who's going to use that file and make changes and give that model back to you. Um, maybe this is a good idea that you give them the external reference file and keep the sheet file with you. So whenever that original model file is going to be updated, um, the sheets are going to update automatically. Now let's go back to our Revit and go ahead and export the same sheet. But this time, I'm going to keep the export views on sheets and links and external reference setting off. I'm going to go next. And I'm going to call this no xref. OK. Let's go back to our folder. And I have a file which is no xref and I'm going to open that up. Now you'll see here that you have that particular file in your sheet and you have this A3 title block as well. But if you go into the model, you have this particular CAD file in your model. So it's the same file where you have your model and the sheet. So if you make any changes to your model, the layout is also going to be updated. So this is useful when there is only one person in charge of the print sheets and making the changes in the model as well. But if there's people are two separate people, then you might want to separate these two items and have the drawing extract into a sheet. So you have both the options available. You can choose the way whichever works best for your conditions. Now, one last thing I want to show you is that how to export multiple different drawings. For example, I want to export all of my ground floor, first floor, second floor, all my floor plans and all my elevations here, all my sections in a patch. How do I do this? So let's go under file, export, CAD formats and DWG. And instead of using current view or sheet only, I'm going to go ahead in session view and sheet only. So and there is a second option of choosing whether you want only all the views, all the sheets or all views and sheets, everything. So if you have multiple sheets, you can say, OK, you can choose um, sheets in the model and make a choice of which sheets you want to export. For now, I'm going to go under views in the model and I'm going to choose which drawings that I want to export. I want to export all the elevations. I want to export also one of my 3D views and of course, all the floor plans. And I have one of the sections which I want to export. So this is a selection which I want like to export. Make sure the settings are correct. If you're exporting a 3D view, make sure that you have selected the correct options based on your needs. If you want your 3D view to be poly mesh 
or do you want your 3D view to be in ACIS solids? For me, I like exporting in ACIS solids instead of mesh file. I'm going to say OK and next. And I'm going to uh, go in the same folder and this time I'm going to keep automatic short name. So it's going to automatically name all of my drawings. I'm going to say OK. So there we have uh, multiple different files exported and named by the name of the views. So let's say, for example, I want to open one of my elevations here. And there we have all the elevation exported as a CAD file. If you select any of these lines, they are converted into a line, a text converted into a text. So it's a good translation of a Revit file to a CAD file. Let me go ahead and open a 3D view. Let's go ahead and open this one. And you will see that this is a CAD 3D file. And we, because we chose ACIS as solids, each particular element is going to be a 3D solid element in DWG. If you have exported it as polymesh, each surface is going to be considered a mesh. So this is a pure CAD 3D translated from Revit 3D to CAD 3D. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. In the next episode, we are going to talk about print settings and how to set up your drawings correctly for printing. So please make sure to subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.